Hello everyone! Today I'm going to be showing you how I journal in my crochet journal. I recently picked up knitting so I guess it's now my crochet and knit journal. There are many different ways you can creatively keep a crochet journal and in this video I'm going to show you a couple of different spreads that I came up with while also giving you some ideas for a lot more. Before I add anything into my journal, I first like to design it on my iPad. I use the app Procreate to do this, but you can also take a scrap piece of paper and do it by hand with a pen or pencil. In doing this, I can figure out how exactly I want the journal to look so I won't end up messing up the pages or regretting how I made it look. I tend to do this with the majority of my journals besides diary since I'm pretty particular on how I want things to look, and if I just go at it without planning it, it always looks horrible to me. You can also do this for digital journals to save printer paper and ink, or if you just prefer to create a digital journal. This is my first time actually adding to the journal, so I was deciding on what exactly I want to add to it, which is a great segue into different spread and prompt ideas. Your crochet or knit journal doesn't just have to be strictly patterns. You can make mood board spreads about what you want to create. You can make diary or idea pages where you just scribble on the whole page with different thought process you had or mistakes you made and how you came about with creating the pattern. You can have yarn swatch pages to where you add the scrap yarn to use in a certain pattern to the journal so you don't spend an eternity trying to remember what brand of yarn you used. You can have color palette spreads or different crochet and knit techniques. The possibilities are endless. It doesn't have to be a bland journal either. You can decorate it the same way you would decorate a film journal, an anime journal, an art or a scrapbook journal. Once you figure out what kind of spreads you want, you can go ahead and start designing out a basic outline of how you want the spread to look. I do this as minimal as possible because I know that how I design, it will tend to change when I'm actually creating the spread in the physical journal. So I decide where I want to put certain things, how big I want certain things, and then once I'm set on those, I can move on to the next spread. This first spread I was planning out for my fall cardigan, which is in the video I uploaded a couple of days ago, actually. I also did some quick planning for my yarn swatches spread, my abbreviation page and started to design a little mushroom for my September spread. One day I will learn how to draw but I think this little guy came out pretty cute. I spent some time drawing detail into his sweater but it didn't matter because the printer unfortunately didn't pick it up but I began to think if I should use this guy for every month and just give him different poses or something depending on the weather of the month. Once I finished planning out all the pages that I was going to do today I gathered my materials and got to work. All the materials I use will be linked in the description box below. I mainly use tons of scrap paper, washi tape, and stickers. The most important of this though is my pins and my double-sided tape which I will thank the person who made this every single day. I first started a bit slow with the abbreviation page, mainly because I was scared since it was the first page of the journal and I didn't want to mess it up. So I spent ages figuring out what kind of paper I wanted to use or how I wanted to use it until I thought, since it's an abbreviation page, why don't I use my dictionary scrap paper? So I just took that and used that as a background for the pages that were going to be written on. To remember where I want something to be, I use my pencil to draw a very soft line where I want it to be taped down and then after taping it I can easily erase the line if it shows at all. I have shaky hands so sometimes the whole drawing the line thing is kind of useless but it helps on occasion. Your first page can be anything you want it to be. If I didn't have a pattern I wanted to put here that was made before September started, I would have made my first page a monthly spread but because I want to add my knit cardigan and some yarn swatches I used in August, I'm just starting with the abbreviation page. You can even have your front page start with basics on how to crochet and knit in case you ever want a friend or family member to use your journal to learn. Lettering is not my forte at all. I always just copy some lettering off of Pinterest and then practice the lettering on a scrap piece of paper for eight years before still messing up on the final product, but it's okay. The abbreviation page wasn't that good looking, but it served its purpose. For the yarn swatch page, I didn't do tons of preparation due to it just being where I was going to add my yarn swatches, but I did take forever to figure out the lettering just like I usually do. You can decorate this page in so many different ways, and I think adding the actual yarn into the journal gives it 
bit more dynamic and texture to the whole thing. The pattern page was the page I was looking forward to doing the most. I was super excited because I enjoyed how I designed it earlier and knew it would turn out pretty decent. The first thing I did was cut out a drawing I made of the cardigan for my last video. I thought it would be cool to add it to the center, but if you're doing something similar, you can just take a photo of the garment if you're not an illustrating connoisseur. I printed out three different sizes since I wasn't sure what size would give me enough room to write out the actual pattern, but I ended up going with the largest size. I took some extra scrap paper from that cutout and made some color swatches with my cute and vibrant Ohuhu markers. They're the more affordable version of Copic markers, and honestly, I don't think I ever will buy Copic markers. I do like how Copic markers are more muted, and that will work a lot better for certain colors, but I've had these Ohuhu markers since 2020, and I think they're going to last me forever at this point so i doubt i will ever make the switch it did though pain me to my core coloring this entire circle it felt like the paper was sucking out all the ink from the marker and it was physically painful I decided to use color 21 since it matched the one in the design i made earlier after i finished filling the paper and my nose i grabbed the exacto knife and begin cutting out the extra white border from the cardigan drawing. Then I just taped the ohuhu circle to the center of the page and added the cardigan drawing on top. Super simple, could have done it better, but I'm okay with it in the end. I then took another eight years on the lettering and at this point I stopped trying to be somebody I'm not and just did what I could when it came to the lettering. For this page, I cut out my cute mushroom boy and even gave him a friend to hang out with and actually cut out the extra leaves that I designed since I didn't feel like using the X-Acto knife to accurately cut out the leaves. So I just took them out, taped my friends onto the page, and did the best I could with the lettering, which was probably the best of the video so far. I used an ohuhu to trace over the letters and there was ghosting, but I was okay with it since I was going to write over that area with a dark pen later. I added some basic fall leaves on the page and then on the page next to it, I added two lists, one for projects I want to do and then another for projects I'm going to do. The last was my inspo collage page. I was pretty excited for this page because I could add as many visuals as I want and printed out images of pieces that I think are really cute and would love to either replicate for myself or create my own version for tutorials. There's a couple in here that are patterns owned by other people, so for those I would just purchase those patterns to support the artist and just make it for myself. But the ones that are from like Dolce & Gabbana or H&M, I can remake those however I want honestly. I also took pieces that inspire me to try new things like crochet crocheting a sweater or knitting a sweater or relearning how to knit a scarf. I layered them around to make sure every piece is visible. After the spread was done, I did some cleaning because the tornado this journal caused was pretty wild. So I cleaned up, putting the scraps in my scrap zip block just so I can reuse them for other journals and then just straightened everything up. I added my entries off screen because I wanted to take the time to figure out how I wanted to write the patterns into the journal exactly. But now it's time for a quick journal flip through with the completed pages that we worked on. Okay, so I just finished writing all of the different entries in here and I wanted to show you the end result just to give you some more ideas and inspiration of what you could do for your own journal and then hopefully maybe down the line I can have this entire thing filled and I can do like a cool little journal flip through. I need to fix this. I might like add a piece of paper here and redo the front or maybe keep it as it is just to say hey this is what I started with or something. All right so opening it I didn't add anything to the table of contents just because I feel like I'll probably do that at the end when the notebook is completely complete. But right here is the abbreviations page that we made together. Um, I wrote down some abbreviations. I thought that I was going to be able to add so many in here, but there was no space whatsoever. 
and the website I was looking at for abbreviations, they had so many abbreviations. So I just wrote some that were most important to me. And I made, I put a little extra over here. But yeah, I just wrote down the abbreviations here and then added a little Nezuko here just for some filler because I didn't really have anything to put over here. Like maybe I could have put it more, but I like having Nezuko there. And yeah, that's really all there is to the abbreviation page. I have some knit and then some crochet because that's going to be the majority of this book and I feel like when I start something else that I'm not going to say because it will be a spoiler, I'm probably going to have a little section for that as well. So it's not going to just be crochet in here. All right, so I knew this was going to happen, so I brought some tape with me. Okay, so this right here is my yarn swatches page. I have yarn swatches from my fall cardigan, from the first cardigan that I made, and for the cardigan that I made for my friends, just because that, that was like the majority piece that I was working on during August. I used some washi tape to color coordinate with the different yarn swatches, um, but then I kind of just said whatever for these. I wrote down the brand name, the weight of the yarn, the yarn size, uh, what needle and hook you'd have to use, what's the material made out of, and how soft it is. Um, I think that's pretty important for me so I can know like, okay, I want something that's super soft. I'm going to use this instead of this. And I added these dots and diamond shape to act as like a border so I can separate the two pieces of information. And I also wrote down the color names right next to the swatch so that I can know what color it is in case I ever want to buy it again. But yeah, the washi tape did not stay down at all. So I had to add pieces of tape whenever some of them were lifting like I did earlier. But yeah, that is my swatch page for August, and we are going to move on. So this right here is my first ever pattern page. I decided to dedicate it to the fall cardigan that I just did, mainly because I didn't feel like doing it for any of the others since it was a long time ago, and this was like the closest to August. I mean, I did finish it in August, so I decided to go with this. Uh, so what I did was I just added the little title here, and I used... Like I, for each pattern page, I want each to have its own decoration that's based off of what I made. So because this is a fall cardigan, I added little fall leaves and stuff and I color coordinated it with fall colors and the colors that went with the cardigan. Um, I added the materials right here and then the measurements for the different panels and everything that I have to make over here. Right here, I added the start and finish time. And I would have added the hours, but I didn't keep track of how many hours it took to make. So that's why it says in A there. Um, right here is kind of like my key code area where like if I add a, an asterisk for whatever reason, it'll be up there. And the format is going to change for each pattern. Like say for my next pattern, I'm going to have the title over here or even in the middle or on the bottom and then just switch it up like that just to keep the journal looking really cool and creative and stuff. But I added the end result here as well as some more swatches for this specific cardigan just because I have so much of this extra yarn so might as well use it for something. But yeah, I have each section of the pattern highlighted and the most important parts of it highlighted like so you won't just be digging like okay where, where does it say cast on you can automatically skip okay cast on 70 stitches use a rib stitch for a total of five rows etc etc yeah i i like how it is um this is okay it's not the best but i don't hate it either okay so the next page is the september page i did not add anything here because i didn't want to spoil anything of future videos that i'm gonna do so i'm leaving this blank until after i finish this video um but for this page i printed these little guys out if you want to give me a name for them then go right ahead i can't think of anything right now it sucks that i spent a lot of time making those little v's for the for their sweaters but it does not show up whatsoever in the printout but it's okay but yeah i added september here i added more fall leaves because we're getting into fall in late september and i made sure to add the year just in case this goes on for like two to three years or if i forget to add anything into it or something but yeah this is just the page where i write everything down i'll have like little boxes and then i'll write down the project i have to do and i can check it off or if i complete something that i didn't put in, in the to do i'll just write it here and put like okay this is what i completed and possibly 
add like a little number like say okay it, this fall cardigan was completed on september 8th and it is on page 16 or something just to make the september section easier to find i'm gonna keep this in september until i am in october so that way i can just automatically skip to the september month because it is september and then i can just go on from there and not have to shuffle through all the pages and so the last page that i have here is my inspo page i just put different things that i would like to make in september so like i want to make more crochet sweaters because i've never done that yet before i want to make some more knit scarves because the last knit scarf i made was pretty bad so i want to try and remake it i want to make a knit sweater for the first time i want to make really long knit cardigans and i also want to study how to do cable um, stitches with knit as it shows on these two. There's also like two spoilers in this page, but I'm not gonna say anything about it. But if you look into it, you can probably guess what it's gonna be. But this sweater is really cute. I think this would be pretty cool to remake. There's a couple of these that like for this one, I wanna remake, but I wouldn't do like a video on it because this isn't my pattern at all. But I just wanna remake it because it looks really, really cute and I would love to wear that and I love the colors. Um, but if I remade something like like this sweater, it's okay to make a pattern for it because I can do my own interpretation on it and stuff like that. And like this one, I think I found this on Pinterest. Yeah, I did find this on Pinterest and it looks like, like an H&M sweater. I can remake an H&M sweater. <laughs> but yeah, that is all of the entries in this video. I will maybe at the end of each month, I could have a little a monthly journal entry flip through which would be pretty cool but or maybe just when i finish each journal then it would make sense to have a flip through or something like that but yeah i hope you enjoyed this video i hope it was really helpful and gave you some ideas and inspiration on how to make your own and this can just this can also be applied to any type of journal like film journals art journals scrapbook journals anything. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you in the next video.